Hi all, it's Laura from Homeschooling with Classic Stories. So this week is week four. So this week we talked about Benjamin Bunny. So for Benjamin Bunny this week, we talked about some history and history for pre-K and then into kindergarten is often family-based history. So that's what we started with was we talked about Benjamin Bunny and he's going to visit his aunt and his, or the other way, um, are visiting the aunt and the cousins. So, um, so what we, we did for that was we talked about my son's cousins, aunts, grandparents. Um, so that layer of family tree. And we just took a piece of paper, we drew it out. I found it really helpful to have pictures of those people because while he's met them, um, it, it sometimes isn't really a connection of um, this person is my aunt. It's just, oh, this is the lady who made cookies with me that one time. So that was really helpful to have photos. Um, and all that I did for that was I had my tablet while we were drawing the family tree and, you know, oh, this is, you know, Aunt Andrea or, or whomever. I also just stuck with one side of the family tree. If your child is doing really well at this, maybe you can continue. But my son kind of lost interest um, once we got to you know, his, three of his cousins, aunt, uncle, two grandparents, and then we did his family as well. Um, so, so myself and my husband and our children, um, my son kind of lost interest after that. So we didn't really do the other side of the family. Um, and I think that that is okay for now. Um, he got the idea of cousins. He has cousins. He got the idea of an aunt. He has an aunt. And so it kind of solidified his connection to the story. We did talk before we did the family tree. We did talk about Benjamin Bunny and we had already drawn a family tree for them. Um, and so I already had the paper for that. We did that. If you listen to the the how do we read through this um, part, we actually did that while we were telling the story the second time. So we drew out a family tree of Benjamin Bunny and his cousin Peter, Flopsy Mopsy Cottontail, and then his aunt as well. Um, so. <clears throat> That was already done, and so it was good for him to see, oh, the family trees look very similar. So that was history. Then next we had fine motor, um, which if you recall at the end of the story, they are doing some folding. So I sort of wanted to do some intro to folding paper, so like some early origami work. And if you've looked at the YouTube channel Art Hub for Kids, which I recommended in another video, and it's what we use for drawing. Um, I don't mention it a lot on here because they're not tied into Beatrix Potter, but um, they also have kind of an origami section for kids. My son hasn't really done any folding, and I kind of thought he would just sort of take to it, and I was very wrong. Um, so we turned it off because he was getting frustrated with it. Um, and so I just sat down next to him and we did some folding next to each other. Um, and so this is what, what I made. All that I was doing was trying to fold, you know, it's kind of like the intro, intro to like a, um, what did, what did we call these as kids? Cootie catchers. Um, it's kind of like the start of that is what I was trying for. So all I, all that I did was we actually have some large size origami paper. So it's this size, um, just as a comparison. Um, so it's a bit larger than like some of the, the nice little tiny origami paper that you've probably seen. But so we have some of this and then all that I did was I just kind of did some folds that I thought that he could replicate. Um, my intention was not for him to make a cootie catcher. My intention was for him to just sort of follow along with the folding. Um, this is what my son made. Um, so I think that I'm going to try and incorporate more folding in the future. It's a skill that I didn't realize I was really neglecting. Um, he's made a handful of paper airplanes in the past, but I think paper airplanes perhaps don't require quite as much precision folding as something like this or something like on the Art Hub for Kids requires. So this is a skill that we're going to, we're going to work on it. Um, and I have this great paper. Um, I got it just at sort of our dollar store. 
Um, so you should be able to find this. If you don't have access to origami paper, um, this is thinner than regular paper, like regular computer paper. <clears throat> it is thinner, um, but I, I don't really see a reason why you couldn't just cut a square of computer paper um, and fold that way. Your child might get more interested in it if they do some coloring. My child likes penguins, so, so he really liked this paper. But um, but I think in the future you'll see a few more folding things because I have definitely realized that I have neglected um, to work on any of that particular type of fine motor skill. Um, and I really noticed it when, for example, so like the paper is down on the table and like I'm creasing it with my finger and like he's picking it up and doing it with his whole hand. That was kind of a, a, a moment for me to realize that like, the finger pressure isn't there, so he doesn't have that skill. He probably doesn't have the like muscle movement capability to do that. Um, but like he didn't really get the this kind of motion as opposed to like the whole hand motion. So we're, we're going to do some work um, on the skill, um, which I think will be good. So we did do some origami this week. The only thing I would say is if your child has done some folding pa paper before, Go ahead and check out Art Hub for Kids. Just type in like Kids Origami. Um, they have a ton of, of resources to do origami with. It's great for this one because the bunnies are doing some folding at the end. Um, they are obviously folding cloth. But um, regardless, it's, it's kind of a nice tie-in to the story. If your child is like mine and has not done any folding, I do recommend what I did, which was basically just to sit at the kitchen table next to him and to give it a go, just sort of fold in a pattern that you like um, and that you think is easy enough. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's always more time in the future to figure out how to fold paper or whatever else. So, oh well. Um, the other thing that we did this week was we did scarecrow listening. You'll see a link to that below, um, but that's what our pages are for this week. You'll see that these scarecrow pages are all exactly the same, except the directions change. <clears throat> the purpose of this is to have your child practice following directions. That's the point, is to show their listening skills, a bit of imagination, and to follow directions. So there are four directions at the bottom of each one. I chose four directions because my son is four and four felt like a very manageable number. So I'll show you the ones that he did. Um, this is the one that we started with. You can do them in any order. It really doesn't matter. Um, but the pages themselves are just like two twigs. Um, I modeled, I realized that I'm making religious symbolism and that was not my point. Um, if you look in the Beatrix Potter book, that's this is literally what it looks like. It's two branches that are put together. Um, so if your family is not religious, yeah, neither is mine. That's just, that's just how the Beatrix Potter book looked. It was kind of after I put it together that I was like, oh, um, anyway, so Scarecrow is what we're trying to go with. Um, we had already talked about Scarecrows a little earlier in the week. You'll see that in the next video. Um, I kind of paired the, the videos awkwardly, I realized, but, um, we had already talked about Scarecrows earlier in the week. And so as a result, he already knew what scarecrows were. If your child is not aware of what a scarecrow is, this would probably be a good time to like pull up some pictures, maybe do like kid friendly scarecrow pictures because Halloween is coming and you might find some really creepy stuff on the internet. Which I think is just a general life lesson. Um, anyway, so here's what we did. Um, this is the green hat with the blue stripes. And this is the yellow jacket he made, and it has some buttons on it that are brown. This one, um, I sat next to him and I read the directions. And I'm not sure what personality type you have, but as he was doing this, I kept, you know, covering my eyes because it was really hard to not like jump in and, you know, why is, why is the head over here? Why? Um, and it's so small. And the three lines, why? Um, if you are like me and have a tendency to jump in, this is one particular activity where it's really meant to be the child's interpretation of the directions. 
So what I ended up doing after this one of me reading the directions and then like doing like this so I couldn't see what he was doing. Um, after this, I actually read a single direction, got up, did something else. He called me over when he needed the next direction. I read it to him and so that I was doing something else. Um, and that worked out just fine. So this is the first one that he did. Um, he did, in fact, follow the directions. Maybe not to my taste, but it's not my art, is it? Uh, this is the next one he did. Something you'll notice in this is that these two are very similar. There are two that involve creating, sorry, that have colors of hats and jackets. So you'll notice that there are two very similar. Again, you don't have to do them in any particular order. Um, my son did have some trouble with stars. So he did ask me to draw a star for him on a separate piece of paper, which he then tried to copy. So that's what you see here is I actually had drawn because he had called me over and said I, he didn't know how to draw a star. And so I did one on a separate sheet of paper that he then tried to copy. So that's kind of what you're seeing here is the star shaped buttons that he's, he's trying to copy. Um, but, uh, you know, he did in fact follow the directions. He's got the right colors going. Um, and this one is actually in better places than the first one. And then the last one is the one I actually really like that I thought he would dislike, but I guess I didn't know. This one was great. So this one has not very many colors to it. It just says to draw a party hat. So he drew like kind of the, um, uh, I don't know, like birthday party hat. He chose gray. I don't know, my kid likes gray. And then it says six colorful streamers and he chose to make them like hair out the top, which I thought was lovely. And then to make a huge t-shirt, he picked brown, and he thought that he should have his name in his armpit. I don't know, but that's what he told me. So he, after he drew his t-shirt, he told me about putting his name in his armpit. It was important to him. Um, and then finally, to draw a dog, um, he drew the dog over here. I'm not sure if you can see it, because he also chose a secondary brown color. Um, but that's what he did. And this is actually the one that he was most proud of and really enjoyed doing. Um, so uh, you'll find these three links again down below. I hope that you enjoy them. I hope that origami goes better for you. So, And I hope you also enjoy the family tree history for this week. So I'll see you in the next video to talk about what the second part of what we did for this week was. See you.